showing genuine concern, ask what the client feels should be done. Say to them, what do you believe should be done? Accept responsibility. So many agents are looking to pass the buck to someone else, the market, the lawyer, the appraiser, the other buyer, the other agent. Accept responsibility to clarify or rectify the situation, even if responsibility for creating the problem is not directly yours. For example, it was created by another party to the transaction. That dirty, rotten mortgage broker, appraiser, brrr, stop it. Accept responsibility to clarify, rectify the situation. And then after that, follow up. Follow up. Follow up. up, 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 up. Yep. Follow up after the fact. And here we are. How to avoid. This is uh, some people have heard me mention, you know, uh, pamphlets or something like that. Things that you can share. How to avoid the five biggest selling mistakes. Experience shows that the right price sells a house faster than any other factor. When the listing price is more than 5% over market value, the price alone discourages the buyer. Hello, have we been talking about that? Doo, 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 doo. Maybe. See, this is because overpriced homes scare away potential buyers who think they can't afford to look because most buyers are not this aggressive investor. They just believe that they can afford to look at it. That's what you need to educate the sellers on. Most sellers believe there's somebody just waiting in the bushes to steal their home for the lowest price. But come on, guys, you know that most buyers are not waiting in the bushes. They're just waiting to find the house that makes sense for them. Educate the seller. Buyers who do look at an overpriced house know they can get more home for their money elsewhere. The market sets the price. 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 As its condition, this is that frustrated seller. We're selling as is. Put that in the listing. You're actually detracting people. In a state like New York, I'm sure that they'll, things will be worked out in the contract and eventually go to as is, but why do you need to put it in the ad? Leave things up for negotiation. So in a competitive market, buyers won't even consider a house that needs fix, fixing up. In contrast, a sparkling showcase home kit stopped out her 100%. Buyers who are willing to make the repairs after moving in automatically subtract, educate the sellers. The sellers don't always know that the, they, that the buyer is going to subtract the cost of needing fix-ups from the price they offer. Either way, you save nothing by putting off fix-ups and it will likely sell, sell, sell her home. Now, here's the other side of the coin. Doing too much to the house could create a situation where the homeowner gets even money or loses money. So I would be consulting with a contractor, just finding out what the cost versus actual value is. These are conversations I've had with the sellers. What's the cost versus the value putting right, a new kitchen in? Let's analyze it. How much will a new kitchen, kitchen cost? How much time will it take before it goes to the market? What's the market conditions in which we're in right now? What's the market conditions in which we're in right now? Lavishly over improving. We just said that while it's important to fix whatever needs fixing to get your home ready for the sale, undertake a major, and I know you scratch your head. Oh my gosh, Mike, I've had sorrows like that before. Too many of them. Oh, you need to educate them. You need to have a conversation around it. You need to write things down more methodically to go over, okay, well, if we do this, how much will it cost? How long will it take to get it done? What will happen to the economy and what will happen to the comps and will a buyer be willing to pay for this type of kitchen, this type of bath? So here we are, undertaking a major project can cost more money than you can recover from on the sale. If your improvements will push your home's value more than 20% over the average neighborhood house values, don't expect to recoup the entire cost. That makes sense, guys, especially in co-ops, right? Or condos even. So if a co-op building, if selling for, let's say, $400,000, uh, two bedroom apartment, let's say, if something's 400,000 for two bedrooms, uh, and then you, after doing the renovation, you're all in for like 500,000. I mean, will someone pay that value? It's not a question of only will the bank loan, it's a question of will someone pay an extra hundred thousand dollars for a new kitchen after they see all the comparables in that particular building selling $400,000, will they be willing to pay? Remember education, education. Not disclosing defects. 
Transparency is the key to society today, isn't it? It always has been, but more and more today because of information is readily available. We're no longer the gatekeepers. So let's go, let's go right into the headwinds. Make sure you disclose any hidden or material defects to prospective buyers. It could be also your legal obligation. So when you know there's a problem, don't keep it to yourself, risk being a party to a misrepresentation lawsuit. If there's a defect, obtain a quote to get it fixed and either get it done or pass this information on to a purchaser. Now, of course, if you don't know, you don't know, right? If you don't know, you don't know. But if obviously, make sure you have any hidden defeat defects that you know about and really just figure out, in my opinion, just figure out what it's gonna cost you so you can address it or at least disclose to the, to the buyer because they will be bringing in their home inspector or engineer. They will find it anyway. Play hardball, woo! Sometimes the seller who decide to play hardball, assuming other offers will be forthcoming. This can backfire, yes? Too often we see sellers take months to sell their home at a much lower price after rejecting early offers. Oh, you heard this. No one wins if you approach negotiations with boxing gloves on. Treat every offer with respect. See, most agents, they think they need to get in this dramatics, like, oh, that's a low ball offer, Bob, the agent. And I've seen some of the agents do that. And believe me, ready? For my senior agents listening to this video right now, I want you to think if you've been through the downturn, you've experienced this, just don't forget that we're heading to a new transition. If you don't treat every offer with respect, you may not get another offer for months. The problem is so many people during the upswing market when they didn't get an offer and they play hardball, they punch people with a boxing glove. Within two weeks, they got a new offer and everything. They look like the superhero because they were aggressive. Now you have to treat every offer with respect. Sometimes play, people place an offer based on either style, how they negotiate, uh, sometimes based on what they don't know, maybe. So that's why you should treat every offer with respect and not think that somebody's being dubious every single time. Not somebody's, not, uh, people are not always trying to get bottom, bottom price. Some people just literally couldn't afford the $900,000 high, so they made an offer at $820,000. That wasn't, they weren't trying to lowball. They were just presenting an offer in, in the hopes to get the price. Educate the seller on sometimes people will do this, so let's not go crazy and play, I'm gonna play hardball with these people because Guess what? That may be the only offer you get. Even where you reduce the price when the market transitions. Treat every offer with respect. So as I wrap up over here, today was talking about working with sellers. Working with sellers. There is so many things you need to know when building your real estate practice and every piece of the business should be treated Okay, with equal respect and learning. See what happens, my friends, as you build your real estate career, you think you've got it because you went to the next step, right? Maybe you made 50,000 in commissions one year and the following made 100, so now you think, okay, well, I'm gonna stop learning or stop perfecting my business and creating some consistencies and systems around my business to build it bigger. So many times. And that's why when the agent has the following year, and then they go from 100 to 75 again, it's because they didn't have a repeatable process and they didn't hone their craft to build it bigger. That creates this graph that most people make fun of. I don't make fun of it. I think it's a serious problem in our industry and I believe that uh, I'm so thankful to have you guys on this meeting today because I think that you're learning, you're growing, you're open-minded. And I know with open-minded individuals, that's the secret, my friends. See, I've seen it all too many times before where people go out and they just miss one step that could have took them to the next level. That's why it's super important to be patient and to learn all the time. Create a process that you repeat over and over and you will have consistent results that you can build on and build it bigger. I hope that's valuable to, to you today. We're gonna now stop and ask if there's any questions. Thank you.